accidentally walked into the office earlier. <laughs> See my car over there. We need to risk assess this crossing. What, what's this one here? That one is the storage facility area. Really very uninterested in there. We won't really bother them. We will do it the main warehouse for you. Which is your park? The park is actually outsourced now to Oxford. We have a huge part of the other manufacturers. And that is really good. It's not 24 hours, but it's probably a 16 hour day. Um, they can ship out through the night and they do overnight deliveries. So most of our dealers. I thought it was all this side, I didn't see that that was parked though, right, because the sign's a lot smaller. <laughs> I just see the big one and thought, yep. <laughs> Very familiar car. Yeah, it's weird. Very, very familiar. I think he's following us. This is our main reception. We've got a few products on display here. So, you know, we've got advertisement for the engine over there. We've got the little toys. You know, some people, you get around Toys R Us, you'll see a John Deere version. Uh, Kubota do do the same thing. It's just a bit of branding. Quite a similar style. B-Series tractor. Yourself. All right, B-Series tractor is one of the first tractors that we actually imported into the country before Kubota UK started. So you can see a lot of B-Series products out there. This sort of size, compact tractor. Yeah. Um, and then on the other side of here, we've got one of the final lawn mowers. We are the market leaders in ride on diesel lawn mowers at the moment, still. Um, we're very strong in that position. And there are lots of variations of it. This is, you know, the bread and butter domestic type lawn mower rather than you know, the expensive golf course mower. This is the one you'll have to merge with Paddock Day. Okay, so just a little one to show that. I didn't think there was much of a market for these uh, mowers, was there? They can. Compact tractors below 40 horsepower. Okay, so there's lots of different areas. When they do the market share thing, it's divided up by horsepower range. So if you take it as an average, we've got lots of Yeah, I think so. Uh, it's, always good to, it's always good to see what they're talking about. So if we come through this way, like I said, this is the main office. Um, we can't go upstairs because that's where all the phone calls are happening for the sale. <laughs> Please pin the doors open for each other as well because they are security controls. Okay. Oh, yeah. Good afternoon, yeah. Meg. Right? Yeah. I'll just take you down this way. I told you there was a pool. And obviously as a big as a big company we do have breakout rooms, and meeting rooms, etc. They've got a full table now, which is great, you know. I bet you've got one at college. Yeah. Rubbish at college. Yeah, we have a little R engineering college. Not like that. <laughs> Probably a proper one. A few holes in it. <laughs> okay, so like I say, we're about to get into the warehouse, so don't fool too much and stay away from the pork zone. Storage part, you keep coming through, guys. Just over Nick's got his overly excited face off. Maybe if you push one, it might fall over. <laughs> so, as with Kubota, um, diesel engines are our thing, as you can probably tell when we come through this bit. 
we have a vast array of engines, some of them mechanical, some of them now common rail. Okay. A lot of the time we're selling them to independent people and we sell them to OEMs we call them, so green make wood chippers, you know, nifty lift access platforms, haters, toros, those type of people. They're all taking the Kubota engine and we actually ship them from Japan or wherever they're being built for that particular engine. They come into here and then they get redistributed. So like sometimes we do get the situation where the engine comes from Japan, comes to England, goes to America to go be put in a machine and comes back to England as a machine. We're actually trying to cut down our carbon footprint at this stage. Um, so there's a lot of things that Kubota are doing, not only for engine emissions, but also for logistical operations. So if anyone's studying logistics, it's one of those areas. It's quite a good place to be at the moment. It's quite exciting. So if you just follow me through this way. This is our assembly area. So all the machines have been pre-assembled. Going to shows, some of them are literally parked here until the lorry turns up to take them out. So we've got a range of M7s there, that's the largest one, the M171. We've got some RTVs, RTVs, we were market leaders in the RTV diesel sector, you know, um, recreational vehicles. We're trying to get that back at the moment with this new model. Uh, I think it's a very, very close tie between us and John Deere and also um, <coughs> and people like that. They've got a lot of very fast vehicles on the market. Do you think has anyone driven the Polaris Ranger? Yeah, they're like a they're like a racing version. All right, this one will do 25, but it will do it over rough terrain and it will last. A Polaris will probably do 70 and it will throw you out of seat. We've probably got a motorbike engine. Um, and then also we've got some loads of motor tracks as well. So you can buy a motor tractor with a motor loader. All right. Sometimes if you've got an M7, we're starting to do Kubota implements. Now, so you'll be able to get a baler and a plough that's also branded the same. Which is really continuity of the product. You know, it gives us that extra opportunity to So in the competition I won this little laser tape measure type thing, it's very useful. I've used similar to do tow-ins on a combine tracks, but right now because I'm stuck in traffic I'm using it to see how far away the car in front is. Ah, I did it wrong. Right then. Just over four metres away in front. That's nice. I think I'm about to move.